Hi guys, welcome back to another another book review. Um, so today we're going to talk about uh, The Red and the Black by Stendhal. So the book is set in 1830s France, 1830 France, um, even though the actions must have taken a bit longer than just 1830. I think we're looking at a, maybe two years uh, time frame. I didn't really think about about how long the how long that is but I think you know you're looking at a couple years anyway for all the actions in the novel so basically it's a novel set in uh, France just after the restoration of the Bourbon dynasty so uh, after Napoleon was uh, conquered and sent away to Saint Hel Helena Saint Helens uh, where he's exiled until he died uh, that's when this novel is set Okay, so we're talking about um, maybe 15 years after the end of, of Napoleon. So th let's look at the title first. So the red and the black. The red refers to the liberals, the revolutionaries, the new, the, the people that wanted the new world for France after, you know, to, to further on with the, with the positive thing that, that came out of the French Revolution in 1789. So, and the black refers to the, the church, the clergy, um, who, because they were black, right? And uh, who um, were more attached to the old order, so to the, to the monarchy, and, and the church was viewed as uh, supporting the monarchy, the old system. And this, I mean, this, this happened in, uh, in many places, like um, Spain, for instance. When Spain had its revolution, um, in the early uh, 20th century, the church was on the side of the conservative elements, so Franco and all that, against the communists, okay, against the left. So, um, so the main character of this book is named Julien, and he's from a farming, sort of a successful farming family, but he's basically low class, and the whole book is about him trying to get, you know, trying to establish himself because his, his chief uh, characteristic is pride. Uh, he's desperately proud. And he, he uses his good looks and his intelligence to move up through the social world. And now, because it's a time of change, um, it's, it's sort of possible. And, but, but he looks like he, he, he mainly entertains the idea of becoming a priest as the church was the easiest way to climb up through the social structure. Um, aristocrats or nobles, you had to be born into a good family. Now, this was a time when, and, and this is behind the whole revolutionary spirit, this is a time when uh, money and power were possible avenues for social advance, but not in the, in the, in the old system. So the red has to fight the black in establishing a new system where power doesn't come from being born into the right family. It become, comes from riches. Wow, that's so much better. But anyway, um, so Julien, this is a book about Julien doing his darndest to uh, fulfill his sense of what he's entitled to. Now Julien knows that the chief, that the, the thing about everybody in the world is that everyone is selfish, self-centered, greedy, all that. He takes that as a for granted. And since that's so, that gives him license to act in the same self-serving manner. So basically the story uh, uh, evolves over two clandestine affairs. So one with a uh, wealthy woman from, from the rural setting and one from a uh, actually an aristocratic princess um, and and this is how he's cl he climbs through through structures he's uh, first taken on as a tutor to a well the wealthy family's children and then he is taken on by a an aristocrat who makes him basically his private secretary type thing and that's where he kind of sneaks in and has a relationship with this guy's daughter okay so that's those are the operating points everybody in the world is greedy and selfish and operates from their own 
self-interest and Julien is going to do whatever it takes to get out of his low uh, his low social setting to a higher one and basically he he's a part of the black really uh, even though his hero is Napoleon and Napoleon is part of that anti well yes and no in a way Napoleon reestablishes the ancient way the, the aristocratic rule but in a way he also undermines that so he has to keep the fact that Napoleon is his hero secret and his favorite book is uh, Napoleon's memoirs which he wrote during his exile it's on St. Helens on the island of St. Helens so he has to keep all that secret and private okay so how does a farm boy uh, have any hope of getting out of his his modest origin he does it by means of two things his good looks and his uh, intelligence so I say there's also a third thing his astute an uncompromising um, evaluation of human nature and it's funny that he's gonna he actually uses his conceit it becomes something that the wealthy can respect and um, they reward him because he's so uncompromisingly arrogant I know that doesn't make sense right on its face but that's never less true um, I think that we can understand that that you have to at least respect someone who's so uncompromising right even if you don't think it's it's a virtue or whatever so um, my hesitancy with respect to this book in terms of recommending this book is that it is understanding it I find is so dependent on knowing the history of the time not just the broad history of, of the revolution and Napoleon and the restoration and all that but the really the the the, the, the minutia of uh, social conventions so as this especially comes into play in the latter half of the book when he is private secretary to this um, whatever he is Duke or Mar Marquis or whatever he is um, so so that might inhibit you from understanding and and you have to know a little bit about the ecclesiastical circumstance too you know what Jansenism is what the Jesuits are and what the Jesuits represent and, and all that stuff um, just look up those terms I suppose like look up what Jansenism is or whatever and what being Jesuitical is um, th those terms can give you a bit of a help um, but the book is really I, f I found that it's really um, there are there are passages that I found difficult because I didn't quite understand what the what what the specific uh, cultural um, significances were okay and I and I, I know a great deal of the history of the time and so on um, if you want to read French literature it's much easier to read someone like Zola uh, whom I love and even like Victor Hugo or whatever who I don't like that much but whose books are very approachable and comprehensible so but anyway as with anything like if you want to know a culture you have to you have to learn about it so you have to go through the the process of not knowing what people are talking about and slowly learning it and this is I've done this very much with with respect to 19th century Russia um, so I know the ins and outs of and cultural references and in, in the Russian novels and so on but I guess I don't know as well surprisingly I don't know as well all the, all the reference points um, in the French stuff um, but anyway if it anything that you really want to know about is worth studying you know whether it's uh, Jane Austen's um, early 19th century context uh, or if it's Russia or if it's France or Germany or whatever now this book is good um, so let's say let's say you understand enough about the cultural and, and historical time okay um, the writer is very good he's a very powerful writer very oh I call it um, his style dense so there's a lot of characters and there's a lot of description there's a lot of setting and there's a lot of minutiae 
it's not just it just doesn't gloss over and make make a plot of just like very lightly strewn together and no details I call that dense writing <laughs> that's just my own term anyway um, so he's a very good writer and the passages of, of the relationship that Julien has with the two women he has affairs with are good and I and I especially enjoyed the chapter or chapters devoted to uh, his time in the seminary so he spent about whatever seven months in the seminary and it might be a that that those pa those chapters might be surprising to a reader who th who had a much more exalted view of the priestly vocation. So, the reason why Julien he he tries two angles, right? He tries the angle of flirting with the idea of becoming a priest as the best way to advance socially. So he's he said he he did something very funny at an early age. He memorized the Latin New Testament memorized the Latin New Testament. He didn't really know Latin very well, but he learned, he memorized the Latin New Testament, which was very impressive to people. And so this got him hired on as tutor and got him, you know, uh, a series of, 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 of acknowledgements from powerful people. And he was very good looking, so that, that helped him rise as well. And he used his influence on women as well to advance his social standing so at the time and this it's really an age of chaos and that that's what the whole title means the red and the black it's france tr struggling and trying to figure out whether they're going to be a new sort of uh, republic of you know capitalism and so on or it's going to be fall back to the ancient uh, aristocratic society um, and so that's what the contest is all about. And Julien is kind of in the middle and he's trying to figure out which is the best way to go. Is it to become a priest or is it to become, you know, a lackey of a powerful person? Okay. So he basically tries both things. Um, and, and as his destiny unfolds, he's, he's meandering through the two choices. So we like the book. Maybe. Um, I don't, I don't recommend it uh, without some asterisks, you, you really, you really have to have an interest in French history if you're going to get a lot out of this book. An interest in, or knowledge of, or uh, a willingness to learn about the details. Um, you know what Jansenism is, what Jesuitism is, uh, what those those important things are. So um, you know, <laughs> I, I ran through this entire video already but I failed to actually turn on the camera so I'm tired out after now talking about this book twice for 15 minutes each so I guess all I can say is that it's a good book um, and I'm going to read his other important novel uh, The Charter House of Parma I'm definitely going to read it I also have his autobiography which I started once but sort of set aside so I'm definitely going to read that as well um, he's a very good writer, um, but whether you can get everything out of this book because of its social complexity is is another matter. So anyway, I give it a kind of meh in the middle as in terms of recommendation. Now, in terms of as a writer, he's an excellent writer, okay? But in terms of the storyline, well, if you're interested in the whole matter of social advancement and so on, then... You know that whole matter of finding your way in the world or whatever um, then it might appeal to you um, good writer not my favorite book on earth but I obviously liked it enough that I want to read more of his stuff so that's all I can say so anyway hope you guys are doing well um, I haven't fixed my background here yet because I've not been feeling the greatest last little while but anyway I'm working hard I'm doing a lot of writing and uh, hopefully I'll be able to share some of those, uh, some of my learnings with you in time. Anyway, have a great day, guys. I hope uh, you had a good Easter and you're going to have a good spring. You are having a good spring.